I said, how you doing? Yeah. Yep. I'm just trying to figure out um, the situation here. I thought the free internet was uh, 10 megabit. Yeah, should be fine. Looks like it just compiled. I don't know if it actually built the thingy, but... Yeah, he's got several things I need to do. I'm gonna test that it's actually building by just breaking this. Yeah, it's not even building it. All right. I don't know. I don't think his advice is really productive. I don't think his advice is really productive and the config doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. You said Clippy reports many warnings. Okay. I think I understand how these work now. Yeah, it's um this is their way of making the flags like inclusive. Also the No, I'm here. I'm I get errors for my stuff and it's very annoying. And it has to do with the uh, scope. And I don't know why it's broken. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Hey, you might actually be able to do stuff.
Yeah, I don't think I've had that happen to me. On the other hand, I don't think I try to use... Um, I don't try to get work done under those conditions. I just know I would. Huh? I was just gonna say I just I'm so much more productive being in my normal work environment with all my stuff, and it's just like not even worth fussing with. All right, why the fuck is it still private? Oh no, that bill. Okay, never mind. All right, so let's. Uh, Break this just to double check. Yeah, all right, thank you. Um, yeah, he said you putting static on it wasn't necessary anymore. All right, so I think I fixed that stuff he was complaining about. Wait, what? Yeah, it's basically a linter for Rust. Okay, why ref keyword versus a borrow of the... Like, why have the ref keyword then? I don't understand. Whatever. Once we get rid of the return keyword. <sighs> kind of petty, IMHO, but. used to Haskell. It's much worse there. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I definitely burn on like a single core of work when I'm compiling Haskell stuff over and over. <sighs> Do we finally find a user code choice? Five megabits, I think, is enough for most people right now that don't stream anything. Do they use Netflix? Yeah. That works? Hmm. Damn. That's pretty solid. Could have been. It definitely shouldn't have been 100 kbps. I mean, that's never been a thing with Google Fiber, obviously, because otherwise, why install Fiber? No, I, she probably just had a really bad router. I think it's pretty funny that she just, like, picked up on the free internet and just left it at that. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't care, but... Oh man, I don't even want to downgrade from the gigabit I have to like 350, 300 down, 50 up, because that's what I would get. Are you serious? Huh? No, 300 down, 50 up is, um, that's just the highest tier of internet service Time Warner offers in my area. 
So if I leave where I live with Google Fiber right now and I move to a different part of Austin, I would have to go back to Time Warner. All right. Um, Clippy doesn't compile with uh, stable Rust, which is, you know, lovely. I'm not a fan. But look on the bright side, look what it does to my CPU cores when it has a bunch of dependencies. No. On Tomati? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, I think I found it. Yeah. I'm trying to get Clippy to run, but I'm a little worried because the software doesn't build with Nightly, but I have to run Clippy with Cargo while Nightly is turned on. Otherwise, the LibRSC doesn't work. Yeah. Oh, I see how it is. Bunch of other modules don't have don't pass Clippy. But mine does. Okay. Or at least it seemed like it did. I don't know. I may need to pass like a feature flag. All right. Cargo. Clippy. Clippy. Make Clippy 318. Let's try that. But yeah, I was complaining about um, Cairo threads and stuff.
I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten for Pomodoro. Yeah, when when people get petty with me, I, I go into bureaucrat mode. I'm just like, oh, okay. So you'd like me to call upon my German ancestry and bury you in words and procedures. All right. That's fine. Yeah, I'm better at this than you. Do you really want to do this? Approximate value of cons pi found. Consider using it directly. <laughs> Do you see this? That's fabulous. Look, they detected that a like a fake ass fucking pi constant was being used. That's fucking cool. <laughs> That's clippy. Yeah. Pretty cool. Okay, um, one seventy. Yeah, they named after the Windows Clippy. Yeah. Redundant field names instruct initialization. Are they really redundant? I don't know. Warning, using clone on a copy type. So it'll just silently copy it? Is that a good thing? I have to obey Clip Ear. The fucking Russian commissar will come after me and not accept my PR, so. Mm, not my problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, one, two, three. All right, I think we're warning free now. Well, clip, clippy clean, anyway. Yeah, so the other stuff is uh, thoroughly and not my problem. Um, Okay, um, so I've done that now. Are there warnings I could be checking? Rust, warnings, compiler. Maybe there's like more obnoxious errors. How do I turn on wall, cargo, rust? Wall, how do I turn on wall? Tell me how to turn on wall. Warnings. Warn. No. F. Come on. Warning. No, just show me the fucking Tomlin syntax. Fucking god damn it. Cargo. Turn on warnings. Rest. Come on. I know there's a like a warning in here somewhere. Are they just on by default? Is my code that clean? I don't think it's actually that clean. I think they're fucking with me. Mm. 
No, it's it's definitely like a W all flag that's passed to Rusty. I think. <sighs> Does this build with Knightley? Am I just crazy or? Well, let me retry building this with Knightley one more time, just to make certain I haven't like missed something here. Got 11 viewers on Twitch. That's a little higher than normal. Hello, everyone. Yep. I turned it on after you came on. Come on. Come on. You can do it. I believe in you. Come on. Oh, didactic Momo. I'm not exaggerating when I when I told you I talk to my dad like once every one or two months. I've actually been talking to him more frequently lately because he he's been sending me parts to a stereo, which was like my Christmas present basically. But it took a long time for him to figure everything out because this is like I'm saying like a lot. Sorry, um, this is an extremely loud stereo that he's helping me put together, and you can't. Yeah, yeah, like, if you wanted loud, clear, hi-fi equipment, the 90s was a very good period of relatively affordable, but quality stereos. And the problem is, basically, the cost went up as we added other tech into them, other than just being a good stereo. You know, like HDMI inputs and outputs and all that stuff. It added to the expense, and it also took the engineer's focus off of the, uh... Yeah, the actual stereo quality, right. So, um... <laughs> My setup now, <laughs> I tested it this morning. I actually, like, my Easter morning was just me, like, sitting here, sitting in my living room, like, puttering around with hooking up the stereo. So it has, I have a regular, like, normie receiver that runs HDMI inputs and everything, right? Then the speaker outputs of the home theater receiver actually go to this custom aluminum rig my dad built that has a couple of load spikes on it and a potentiometer. And that's so that running the receiver actually loads the receiver so it doesn't feel like it's not actually taking any power off of it. Because the trying to draw too much load from receiver can make the audio distort, but so can not putting any load on it at all. So it puts a fixed amount of load on the receiver. Then the potentiometer decides how much, uh, basically how loud the audio is downstream. Because it basically takes the, the two sets of speaker cables that went into the receiver and it outputs just normal RCA white red out of the little aluminum housing that he custom built and screwed together. Then that RCA goes into the preamp. The preamp has a tape loop that runs out to the parametric EQ. Parametric EQ modifies the sound, runs it back into the other end of the tape loop one. Then, then we run RCA from the preamp. Oh, that built actually. Wait, really? Mmm, mysterious. All right, I'll remove the shade about nightly. All right. Um, then the preamp RCA. About what? Errors about what? Yeah, I rebuild everything with Nightly. And everything. Yeah, I, I built. 
Yeah, yeah, no, Clippy like kind of does a pseudo build to gather all the compile time information about the code, because the only way to like get all the information Clippy would need is to fake build the code without actually going to like code gen side of things, because that's do the parsing and analysis. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so Nightly seems to work now, mysteriously, even though it didn't last time, but, you know, whatever. It's fine. Um, I definitely remember getting, like, didn't I, didn't I get a panic out of the compiler when I tried to build it with Nightly? Yeah. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty weird. Pretty weird. Yeah. I'm throwing these into the makefile because I really want him to include a makefile so that people know how to build this correctly. Because if you do a plain cargo build or cargo clippy, it's probably not going to work, honestly. Yeah, pretty much. Like, in fact, I'm tempted to just remove those. There we go. Whoops. Um, yeah, Momo said that sounds like a sweet system. Yeah, I, uh, it's, uh, it's fucking loud now. It wasn't before. The receiver just didn't have enough power for the speakers that I had, but now it's... <clears throat> I actually, if you look through my media on my Twitter and you look for the video where I'm standing in a hallway, that's me standing across my house from the stereo system, and then I'll give you an idea of how loud it is. Um, yeah, the dogs are surprisingly tolerant of loud music. I don't really know why yet. I actually try not to do that to them too much, but I would actually like to know why the dogs don't seem to be that bothered by the music unless it hits a certain pitch. Yeah, they don't seem to care unless it. They don't seem to care unless it's like, five hundred to eight hundred hertz. I want to say somewhere in that range. Some yeah, some like that. There's some like range of frequency that bothers them, but outside of that, they just like, they act like the music's not even playing. It's very strange. I don't really know why. Anyway, we're gonna rebase because I know. I know this motherfucker is gonna ask me to squash. I know. Wait, what? Oh, I don't want head. Get rebase support. Uh, wait, hold on. Something doesn't make sense here. There it is. Okay, so we're gonna squash that, and that, and that, and that. All right, so now it looks like one big commit. Ah, shit. Yep.
Mm -hmm. I'm editing the GTKRS examples version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My my repo's gonna need clean up that mimics what I did here. Also, why is my rebase not behaving? Yeah, I can believe that. I can believe the Rust version is more responsive. Why do you write it in Python anyway? Do you feel like you need to use Python for work later or something? What's a call ahead interview? Oh, so it's like a technical interview conducted over the phone? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I did one of those for Google in like 2011. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. You should do it. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lexi. Um, I'm uh, porting the cleaned up Pomodoro version for uh, yeah I'm porting it over to Boxcart Willie yep to this. I'm going to actually add it to my make files too. I don't think you ever need to. Yeah, I don't think that's a thing. I'm going to rerun Clippy on this in Boxcar Willie just in case. Nope, it's fine. Alright, um... Clippy, cargo clippy. Okay, GPOC. 
All right, that's pushed up to Boxcar Willy. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna edit my Makefiles repo and add Clippy to the Rust Makefile. Cause I need to do that. There we go. All right, did something happen to the Rust ref keyword? Because I want to know what happened there. Are you supposed to just use the ampersand now? The ref keyword can be used to take references to the fields of a struct or tuple. I guess they changed something at some point that permitted using ampersand instead of the ref keyword. I'm not really sure. Maybe if I went digging through uh, the thingy. Momo's left us. See you later. There's more people online tonight than there were the last couple nights. Kind of a shame. Yeah. Well, because I was doing like more stuff, you know, a few nights ago when I was initially porting it, but that's all right. Uh, let me see here. Um, yeah, I think that's it for Rust stuff at the moment, unless you have like a suggestion or request. Otherwise, I'll move on to Haskell. You're talking about features in uh, the Pomodoro app? That's pretty much what I plan to do. I plan to just... Huh? Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed just like taking what you had in Python and then just porting it over to the to the Rust. For anybody who isn't familiar, Boxcar Willy is, um, I'll show you the GitHub repo here. It's a little GTK Pomodoro app in Rust. You know what I should do right now? I should fire up Boxcar Willy and show them how it works and then take a screenshot for the readme so that they know what I'm talking about. But anyway, yeah, it's a little, little Pomodoro app. You can start it, stop it, so on and so forth, right? And then it has a little stats thing that I need to clean up. So um, this is a port from the Python version that Elias wrote. Elias is in chat with me in voice chat that you can't see or hear if you're watching the Twitch stream, but he's the person I keep talking to. And um, it's a GTK3 Python app. You can see right there. It actually looks better in his machine, I think, than it does on mine, because I think my GTK theme is very plain. But anyway, um, yeah, so, you know, there it is. And um, what I did was I managed to port it from Python to Rust in like three hours, three and a half hours on stream a couple nights ago. And um, Elias was just saying that it was nice to see me like just burn through that process. Box News has a rest question. Strings bounded by the R hash hash hash. Yada yada. Um, so I'm just using it because it's a way for me to write a multi-line string. That's the only reason. Um, yeah, 
That's the only reason I'm doing that. Um, as far as I know, that's how you do multi-line strings in Rust. It could be there's some like better way or something, but I don't think so. Hey, Mom. I'm pretty good programming. Uh, what? What happened? Oh, I was using the wrong phone this morning, so I didn't get the multimedia message. I will now if you send it now, though. Were you talking about the weather? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna do that, right? Yeah, sure. Oh, it's been great. I really enjoyed it. I still work from home. Nothing's changed there. Yeah. Yeah, our weather's been great here in Texas. Um, it's been fine. I mean, the mosquitoes are a little bad right now because, you know, rain. But other than that, it's been great. Um, I just did my usual Sunday routine. Nothing was really different for me today. I, uh, no, don't care. I'm not a stack edge curator, so I'm not going to do that. There we go. Uh, okay, screenshot's a little uneven, but that's all right. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I just, the, you know, my friends came over, we lifted, we ate food, uh, chatted, watched a couple speed runs. I'll continue. Oh yeah? That's cool. Turkey's not that easy to get right. It comes out kind of dry if you're not careful. Love you too, Mom. You have a good one. Bye-bye. Alright, I just remembered I forgot to set up the GTK application.
So, fuck. I am now racing the demonic Russian... Fuck. Somebody... Oh, that's just you. Okay, good. Um, I need to now get this down before he notices my comment. So, that's good. Um, fuck. Where... What the fuck is this code? RS examples, RG application, RG. All right, it's ignoring it. God. <sighs> All right, what am I? Yeah, there we go. All right. Sure, makes sense that a bug in your code would show up in mine. I didn't really like deviate from your code that much. I'll, uh, I'll copy this fucking application stuff over, even though it doesn't do anything useful here. Yeah, that was one of the things he asked for. Yeah. Gotta convince me. Yeah, you, you don't have to convince me. I'm just annoyed. Um, build UI. I guess I'm not returning a window anymore. Yeah. Does he even do anything with the application here? Window.set application. Okay. I guess I can do that. God. Version of GTK is this? Doesn't say. Very nice. Where are args coming from? Standard Mvargs. Alrighty then. Seems kind of cargo culty, but you know, whatever. Come on. 
No application named run found for the type GTK application. How do... Something like that. Let me think about this. I think I know what's going on here. Yeah, I need to I need to bring some stuff into scope for that to work. Nope. I think I fixed it. Pomodoro, 2110, 2111. Let's run it. Yep. Uh, I fixed the build, but I see the duplicate countdown thing, so that needs fixed. Again, move this back to Boxcar Willy. Okay, I uh, can't find create geo. Uh, all right. It's counting off three at a time now. No. Uh, some kind of race condition or something. <laughs> hmm. 
Oops. To use what to monitor state? Redux is a thing for front end apps. GTK Redux? No. Who are you saying this to? Do they know anything about native GUI development? Because Redux is like a React thing. Not really. No, it's not really. Like, I don't. I don't think they knew what they were talking about. Yeah, don't don't bother. It's really weird. Okay. Yeah, sure. Well, it's the dumb branch right here. We have multiple instances of that running, basically, right? This one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it, it ran multiple hey, take a break notifications too. Mm -hmm. You can see it on my screen. Yeah, they're not unique. I mean, the obvious way to solve this is to use some kind of latch or lock to make the uh, the event handler unique. Yeah, like a concurrency aware singleton, yeah. That's the obvious way to do it, I think. I don't know if that's the right way to do it or not, though. I don't know how you even, like... There's got to be, like, some way to do this. I mean, so basically what's happened... It's interesting. You do have to mash on it quickly, otherwise it doesn't happen. Even if I catch it, 
like when we're at the three minute mark still there's only one running it's only when um yeah i want to do it like this yeah it's it's cranking Yeah, I don't know. We could also just make the container for the Tamati thing thread safe. No, it would be easy. If there's a GDK native solution... No, 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 no. If there's a GDK native solution to this, that's going to be easier in Rust and Python. It's just that I have the option of solving it ex with explicit threading and synchronization in Rust. You just... How do you... I mean, if GDK doesn't have something for this, what are you supposed to do? Because in Python, you don't have... I, mean, I guess there are some locks and synchronization type stuff in Python, but... Pull back, connect, pink. Hello, Twitch people. If any of you know how to do this, speak up. What? Yeah, I figured. <sighs> nah, no, debuffs to something else. Or at least I think so. Yeah. Operations which could potentially block should not be executed in the main loop. Well, you shouldn't be using Python for GTK apps then. <laughs> just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, that's funny. Oh, they do have like explicit threading thing in this example. Yeah, it's I, it's not real multi-threading, but they do have like a threading thing here. That's what a snoring sounds like. Yep, that's how loud he snores. It's the pit bull doing that. Wait, what'd you find? What'd you find? This? I don't really need a queue. I already have one in Rust. I need something that manages the the. Hold on. Ah, uh, we need a unique timeout. That's basically it. GTK timeout add seconds unique. I think I know I 
I think. What? I feel like I have a decent idea of like the essence of the problem. I need to ensure that this only runs, um, that there's only one instance of this running concurrently. Um, my next problem is how do I actually ensure that? I think what I'm, I mean, I, I know, I think I know how I could solve this right now in Rust. I don't know what to do for your Python code. For the record, like, I have I I wrote Python professionally for like six, seven years somewhere in there, and I have no idea how to like f deal with this. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could try to follow the threading code they wrote, but I never found the threading library all that useful in the past. So, What I want here is essentially an mvar, but in Rust. Need mvar. Give me mvar. Where is your mvar? Do I just want a mutex? I'm probably just gonna end up using mutex. This is this is where we bring in the topic branch, I think. No, the problem is you don't have a way to... Oh, you know what you could do? You know what you could do? You could store the source IDs of your created timeouts and cancel all the previous ones if a new one is created. I think that would work in Python. It's gonna be. It's probably going to be different than what I try to do here because I just want to see what I have in mind. But that's probably... You know what the advantage of what I just suggested to you over what I had in mind, though? What I had in mind was I was going to say just leave the old timeout up and then cancel the new one. But what I'm suggesting to you is newest one wins, kills all the other timeouts, so the last user action taken takes precedence, which is probably going to look less buggy. I could be wrong. On the other hand... On the other hand, what I have in mind is going to behave more like a GUI debounce, where successive repeated fast actions get ignored and only the first one registers. That's my guess of how I, what I, what I'm going to do and how that's going to work. But we'll see. Actually, I might not even need a mutex. I just need like. Well, wait, hold on. This is all running in the one thread, right? It's a good choice. Uh, let me think about this.
Yeah. We'll try it. Where's the thingy? Missing countdown lock. Yes, indeed.
Oh, you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I'm dealing with the fact that I did a borrow and it made it mad. I'm trying to figure out why it's mad. Gonna do that. No. Probably. Hmm. Well, I can't lock, let the lock fall out of scope. Does this mean I need to use that clone closure thing? Maybe it does. Wait, no, I know what to do. Hold on. Already borrowed, borrow mute error. Nice. But it ain't. 
It was borrowed, but not mutably borrowed. Let's see what part is it upset about here. 143. Quick start, and hunt, countdown, rift cell borrow. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. This isn't going to work. Yeah, I don't think the stack trace. Temporary value dropped here while still borrowed. I see.
What's up? Yeah, I don't use it. figure out why the the stack trace stops at this borrow and not the second one later. Hold on. Um, yeah, I have to, I'm trying to access the lock. The problem is that holding on to the lock holds on to a borrow of, uh, Tamati itself. And it basically means I can't borrow again under the closure here. Because I need the borrow to stop here before this goes. But the problem is the reference to the lock is itself um, doing that. Oh, get a mug.
No.
fixed how thoroughly. Nice. Oh, what was it? Okay. Yeah? What was the warning? Sure. What was the warning when you spammed it? Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be race conditions where the source ID already doesn't exist anymore. Alright, so maybe that's what I should do in the rest code then? Alright, well, I'm not having much luck with this... Uh, this lock anyway, so. Okay, I'm gonna change the countdown lock to be a vector of source IDs. Um, I guess I could do that, yeah. No, not really. You know more than I do about GTK at this point. Uh, let me find... Um, Docs, GDK, GLib, GTK. I don't think so. Down source ID option. Now I need to import it. So Glib, I think. Missing extra and create glib, yeah, probably. Yay. I'm not actually using it yet. All right, so um, how are you uh, how are you manipulating this at this point? Like, how are you getting the source ID for one thing?
Hold on. Hold. Yeah, sorry. Hold on. I can't. That's fine. I'll just I just have to do like one thing at a time. All right. So. source idea. That's correct. <sighs> Tomati got moved into the closure. Yeah, it's upset about this one. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to set the source ID after I create the the timeout. Yeah, I can. I have. Yeah, I have uh, this reference to Tamati. I cloned the RC. But my mutable bar here overlaps with uh, some other mutable bar. I want to say the one in Connect Click Start, actually. Kind of. Yeah, because we did uh, the first bar mate here. Let's 
good thinking. Okay. Good thinking. Thank you. Okay, so am I just checking for the uh, source ID here? If there's already an existing one? Okay. Well, it would sure help if I could actually look at the thing, but yeah, I don't think this is it. Sources remove. Yeah, there it is. Struct source ID found reference. That's not the right type error for that. I don't think that's right. I'm going to try it anyway, though. Oh, wait, source remove. Whoops. There you go. Cannot move out of barred content. All right. I don't understand what I'm supposed to do if I can only get it as a ref. No, I know what to do. 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 It's fucking annoying, but... don't know what to do. Hold on. Why does it need to own the source ID? Expected <sighs> reference found struck. No, I have the harder version of that. Can I do 
Man, I don't know if this is going to work. Two own. Nope. G load. Let's have a look at source and move. Bill 966 says, Is this on GitHub? I can only find the Python version. Yeah, apparently. That's probably why they need to own it. Anyway, um, so yeah, if you want to see what I'm working on, um, this is my version on GitHub by my app slash boxcar willy. And then um, the original that I ported from Python to Rust is here. I'm not really surprised. Makes sense to me. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Struct on the source ID. I mean... <laughs> no. ID. It's just a U32 under the hood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a U32 under the hood. Yeah, I just need to rest map option. Map 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 map.
a method named to glib for found for type glib source ID in this context. Is that not it right there? Impol to glib for source ID. Perhaps I'd use I guess I need to bring it in scope. No method named from glib. Okay. Yeah, self is a thing. Um, takes a reference of self. Nuts. Mm, kind of not really. Solution's really gross. Well, solution's gross. You know, if I got it to work this way, it's not very satisfying. This is pub. It's pub, no, I'm not humming at you. The struct is pub, it's public. So. Source ID is pub, but the contents aren't. It's how it's defined. Right there. That field right there isn't pub, that's the problem. Dark Knight. And they haven't implemented the copy trait for some reason.
Does it have any tests using source on it? I guess no. Why would it have tests? Why write tests? Why would you care about tests or examples? That's silly. Signal, handler, ID, and source ID are now new type wrappers instead of integers and can't be copy slash clone anymore. It prevents to reuse of them or the usage of arbitrary numbers. Ugh. Okay, hold on. I know who this is. I know, I know this person from Twitter. He's the one who did this. All right, well, if they're gonna tell me who's responsible for my misery, I'm gonna hit them up on Twitter. Usually when it's a dumb value, and it's not like anything incredibly touchy and I don't need a shared reference to it. I don't need to pass around like a reference to it or anything. Normally I'll just clone it. Cause it's just, it's just a fucking number. Like who cares? I understand like their reasoning for not wanting stray source ID references because they probably recycle the same numbers over a long enough time period if the app runs long enough right like it'll probably just loop back around to the beginning of the unsigned 32-bit number um i understand that that's something they want to prevent but i'm not actually holding on to the source id um i'm actually trying to remove it so that i can then drop it so yeah, I don't know. Maybe if I assign it like that, it won't uh, be borrowed anymore. Who knows? Cannot move out of... All right. Expected struct found reference. Can't move out of borrowed content. Immutable borrow occurs here. Immutable borrow occurs here. Can't borrow TomTom's mutable because it's also borrowed as immutable. Sure. Yeah, I don't know why I thought that was going to work.
Kind of a shame, the other day when I was doing this stuff, I wasn't having any problems at all. I guess. If I, this would work fine if I had a copy derived on source ID too, but they did that on purpose, so I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, that seems more opinionated than a bindings library should be. They shouldn't be telling me I can't do that. Well, the thing is, is I'm expecting a learning experience here. I'm I'm going to try to just like hopefully Sebastian will get back to me and tell me what I'm supposed to do because I mean, I don't know. There's no real reason they need to own source ID either. It could just be a reference and then they clone it, but I don't know. There's, there's a lot of ways to do it. I think the reason they own it is because they don't know how long the the FFI is going to hold on to the value. I think that's why they want to own it. That's what I'm guessing anyway. Force the reference to go out of scope. Yeah, okay. Um. Yeah, it's already in a block. My match is in a block. It's already isolated from the other stuff. I cannot move the name variable anymore. This isn't solving the exact same problem I'm having. Or at least I don't believe so. Okay, so how'd you go about testing the bindings to a library? Um, I would at minimum write some examples that showed you how to use it, but there's a lot of ways to test bindings to a library. Alright. Please source remove anywhere in here? Not really. Why did I think they were using source remove anywhere?
Church of Thundership and Rust. Just clone it. Gee, I wish. Ref counting. Mm, nah. Move it. I can't move it. It says cannot move out of borrowed content. Little shit. I can't move all of TomTom Tom into the source move, obviously, and TomTom Tom owns the values, so that's not a thing. <sighs> On the one hand, I just read a here's some ownership tricks in Rust post, and I already knew everything. The bad news is, I didn't get anything that's going to help me. Yeah, they fucked me here. GDK's old, man. You know the deal. It has debug. If I was feeling like a jackass, I could parse the U32 value out of the string that debug returns. I'm not going to do that because it's stupid, but I could just bypass their stupid thing that way. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. But yeah, no, I can generate the debug string and then parse that. So gross. Debug, eek, partial eek, to glib, from glib. Why didn't to glib work?
This thing again. Yeah, there's got to be some solution to this that I'm not seeing. I'm hoping the answer is an RC ref cell of the fucking source ID, because that would be really ugly. I guess I should try that. That's gross, though. Feels very dumb. Well, maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. I did a borrow, what now? Reference the ref cell.
Back to where I started. Mm-hmm. So I'm just trying to weird. Why did wrapping it in an RC and rough cell not work the same way as the Tamanti thing did? change this code. A DRF alone works.
Okay. Alright. I'll catch you later, man. Thanks for joining me. See ya. Hmm, yep. I'm gonna call it for now. I'll push up this branch I've got. Hopefully I'll learn something when Sebastian gets back to me. anyone watching wants to take a look at what I'm struggling with and kick it around, I'm going to link the branch. Thanks for joining me everybody. I'm uh I went ahead and linked the branch in um in chat and uh yeah I'm just gonna sleep on it because that's how these programmer things go, right? Sleep on it, figure it out in the morning when you're taking a shower. Thanks everyone for your time. Bye bye.